I made these lovely little lino cut prints, transferring them both directly and via the jelly plate. I'll show you how I cut two lino versions and test various paints with them. Hello jelly fans! I know you're waiting for this portrait of my mother with the flower print hair to be finished. But I need a little more time for this and as it obviously is going to be a lino cut, I wanted to practice a bit as I haven't done linos in a long time. So I dug up this old photo of an old friend and if you look at the hairdo you have an idea of how old I am and made lino cuts of it. Yes, I know the guy is naked. I hope this doesn't offend anybody, but I'll do only his head. I want to see mainly if printing the lino cut via the gel plate is also possible. For that, of course, I will have to cut a negative of the image as it will get mirrored by the gel plate. So I'll make a positive lino cut and a negative too. And printing them, I will test etching inks, acrylics, and lino printing paint. Also, I'll give you some tricks and tips along the process. So let's get to it. For the cut, I will not use the regular linoleum material, but this easy to cut version. I recommend this if you're new to lino cutting. It is easy to cut and you don't have such a high risk of cutting yourself. Anyway, you should be careful with the cutting tool and always have your other hand below the angle you're cutting into. There's also some protection tools on the market uh, that, could, that could, you can use to protect your hand if you hold it in an angle like this. I tape a transfer sheet on top of the cutting piece and the photo on top of that. You have to press the ball pen pretty hard to get the marks. I tried graphite pencil, but the pressure you can put on them is not strong enough. For the second carving, I'll show you a much better way to transfer the image later. The transfer didn't turn out that great and I have to add direct ball pen marks to the surface, which works easily with this carving material. The delicacy of the face is important if you want a certain resemblance to the model. Luckily, the photo has a lot of good contrast to work with a single layer lino print. Now I'm starting the carving. The tool is wonderful, easy to use and it has a very fine tip. If you want to cut very thin lines, you just barely press the tip down and if you press harder, the line will broaden as you go. One thing I really have to recommend, go slow. It is safer and you don't accidentally slip off and make an unwanted mark that can ruin your design. Or make an unwanted mark in your other hand. I'm showing you some real time here, so you can tell how slow I go. If you want to end a line on a full stop, just stop while you're cutting abruptly and then turn the tip to cut the end off. Showing you that again, go with pressure, stop, turn the tip. If you want the line to fade out thinly, you just lower the pressure when you reach the end. You can practice that for a few times if you're new to this. Most times it is easier to turn the lino surface into the direction of your carving tool than the other way around. 
For this positive cutout, you have to cut out everything that is white, or in this case rather beige, and the dark marks will stay uncut. That is the upper relief that we will roll the paint on later. Don't worry about the marks you leave by cutting away lower areas. It is paramount of a lino cut that you will sometimes see some of the lines underneath. So I cut them in a fairly natural fashion, creating lines that follow the natural movement of the face, if you know what I mean. Now for the paper. I'm using my beloved rice silk paper from China. It is very thin but sturdy at the same time and can take all kinds of paints and a certain wetness. Normally it would be a good advice to wet the printing paper before you print, but you don't necessarily have to do that with the silk paper. And here's a tip how you can test if the cutting turned out well. Make a fortage like I do here, also with the rice paper and a broader graphite stick. Go very flat above the surface and you can see here that this is very satisfying. I love frottage by the way. I like to rip the edges of the paper and I just bought a ruler for that. I'm not overly happy with the result here. And I'll show you another way to do this, more subtle and easy, in a minute. I am starting with the Acua Edging Ink, which is easy to clean. It is an intaglio paint, which really means it is meant to be used in the creases and not on top of the relief. But what the hell, it works with the relief just fine, I think. Here you see me using a very slim brayer. It is perfect if you want to put the paint just in certain areas. I'm getting carried away a bit on making expressive marks with the brayer. Placing on the paper and using the silver spoon for pressure. But that is actually not really necessary with this paper. It picks up the paint perfectly. You can already see it through the thin, thin paper. And the etching ink never ceases to satisfy me. Love the result. I'm cleaning off the Akua with some linseed oil. Any vegetable oil will do. And actually you could clean up the Akua with soap water too. I'm cleaning away the oil too, as I don't want it to influence the next paint, which is the traditional lino printing ink. I make a mistake here, a live mistake you can experience. As I have not used lino paint in such a long time, I didn't mix the paint that has been sitting on the shelf for years, and it separated with the water that it was made with. So the paint is too watery and the print isn't really good. The paint is still fine though, and I'll do another one later. 
Now preparing the second carving, what I'm doing next actually is a photo transfer with a gel plate and acrylic paint. That is a much easier way to get the image onto the lino material. It is a bit dark, so I'm also making some more ball pen marks to see better where I have to cut. I'm taking a bit off with the tissue, but the image stays clear on the lino, even though it is a slow drying paint. And it doesn't smear on your hand either. Now for a little intermezzo. I like the transfer so much that I am making a quick fun intermission here. Taking another photo transfer, adding a ruler that actually prints its numbers and take it off with a special mulberry paper from the art store. Nice! This is the lino carving that I want to test on the gel plate. So I'm cutting negatively. Everything that I carve out will be dark this time. The procedure is pretty much the same, only it's faster as there are less dark parts to cut out. It took me maybe 20 minutes or so. It looks like a negative now, and the gel plate will turn it into a positive. Starting with the Akua again, rolling it out evenly and thinly on the gel plate. So the negative lino cut is picking up only the paint on its relief leaving the rest of the paint on the plate, which I then can print off. It is quite a nice print, very sharp, but I'd like to try some other paints with it. But first I'll show you the other technique on which to rip your paper apart. I'm getting a nice rough shape, but not too rough. You just fold them and make a sharp edge, and you go with a wet brush over it, and then you wait for a few seconds and then you can rip it apart. It works really, really well with the, well, at least with the rice paper. So I'm trying the negative carving with uh, golden open slow drying acrylics now. As usual, you can use any other acrylic color, but you'd have to probably have to use a pickup layer then because it dries so fast. I took a little bit too much paint, so the result is too dark. And, and I'm printing what's left on the jelly plate after the first print. And that is, it is okay. It's not very good, but it has some charm. I have covered the plate with a thin layer of etching ink, Charbonnel in Ocean Blue. After pressing down the lino, I am now wiping off all the color around the main motif. This works especially well with these cotton swabs that are for camera lens cleaning normally. The rest I wipe off with a tissue and linseed oil. Now I have the rather stupid idea to light up some areas in the face and I am too impatient and destroy the nose. Well, the nose looks terrible, which I can correct later. But other than that, I really like this print. I want to try the lino paint now with the negative carving. 
This time I have rolled out the paint for a while to mix it better. The result is not so great. The lino paint is just not intense enough for my liking. I also think that the prints via the gel plate are not the best thing I've ever tried. But I'll try some more. So I'm printing with the lino paint again and this time directly from the first carving again. Well, it's better than the one before. I'm getting bored with the black and white and I want to create a few colorful backgrounds now. A chance to use my favorite acrylic color again, the Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold by Golden. It mingles with the black from before and creates a nice background. I am printing with Lino color again with the positive carving and the result ruins my lovely background and does not turn out well at all. The great thing about this paper and about the lino paint is that I can just wipe the lino paint off and I have my nice background back. I don't trust the lino paint anymore and try it with the etching ink by Charbonnel and it's a lovely print. I am creating another similar background. I love these broad lines the brayer makes. Same paint, good print that needs just a little workout with pencils. And one last try with the negative carving. The Akua, my favorite etching ink, pressing down the lino. and adding some brayer marks just for some interest. And the print is so, naja, as we say in Germany. I'm coming to the conclusion now that the jelly plate combined with the lino cut is just not that great. And for the portrait of my mother, I will stick to old fashioned printing with the lino cuts. A little bit of working out for some of the prints and I'm happy with this practice session. I hope you enjoyed it too. So on I go with my mom's portrait for next week. See ya!